Hello and welcome to this course in Real Life Shape. My name is Magnus Skogsfjord, and in this course we will present some modeling techniques using this flexible and robust freeform modeling toolset. In this lesson I will give a brief explanation about the intended use of Real Life Shape, as well as a short demonstration of its core functionality. Real Life Shape, which is also known as Subdivision Modeling, was introduced with NX9 in order to provide a more flexible toolset for creating advanced high-quality shapes. Traditionally speaking, creating advanced surfaces in NX has been regarded as a somewhat tedious process, especially if you are inexperienced with workflows and the traditional parametric toolset, where you use splines, through curves mesh, defining various degrees of G-continuity, etc. You may have experienced that the CAD software is sometimes the barrier, which ultimately decides the results of your design, as your desired geometry may be restricted by your knowledge and skill set. Sometimes it is even restricted by the software itself that simply doesn't provide you with the proper tools. The intuitiveness of subdivision modeling erases that barrier and enables you to simply pick it up and learn as you go and it now allows you to create geometry that earlier have been considered unachievable in a NURBS-based software, such as NX. By the end of this course, you will have a proper foundation to create geometry that you probably have not been able to generate earlier, or which at least is hard to create. Let's begin with a quick demonstration. For this first model, I will model a shampoo bottle. A typical workflow might start with a raster image or a 2D drawing as a visual template, and this will be covered in the next tutorial. For now, I will just play around with the tool. The tool is located by default under the Surface Toolbox, and when you access this, it's just like entering sketch mode or any other mode. We can see that our toolbar has changed, and we find ourselves in realized shape mode. So all the tools you see here is used for subdivision modeling. I have also made myself a specified role for this, which displays the projection views on my right hand side of the modeling environment. This can be very practical during the shaping process. I'll show you real quick how you can add this. Under View, you can just right click on the orientation bar and select Add to Right Border, or any other side if you prefer to have it somewhere else. Back to the Realize Shape toolbar, we typically start out with a basic shape such as a sphere a cylinder, torus, or any other basic shape that would be most appropriate for your intended design. I'll simply start out with a cylinder with an appropriate size. You may also enable symmetrical modeling if your design will be symmetrical about the plane. I can now grab hold on faces, edges or points and drag as I please and it will automatically snap to the preferred vector direction. Now that I've gotten a simple shape, I can start splitting and subdividing the faces to get access to more manipulation points, thus being able to add more detail. At this stage, it's just a matter of shaping the initial geometry. Notice that no matter how I decide to shape the design, the face always maintains a curvature continuous flow or G2 continuity if you're familiar with that term. By using the tool Set Continuity, you can select cage edges and make a sharp transition on the geometry. This means that we lower our continuity degree from G2 to G0 across these faces. I 
I now use the tool subdivide face to add another level of detail on the bottom of this design. By extruding this upwards and into the model, we have suddenly created a socket in the bottom, which we can shape further. Remember, if you find yourself doing anything wrong, you can always click Ctrl Z to undo your action. I see this is an ok first draft of my design, so I'll step out of the realize shape environment to utilize other CAD tools. First, let's add some G2 edge blends to our design to smooth out those edges. Now all I need is a lid for our design, and we'll utilize traditional CAD tools to achieve this. First I extrude the top edge to create the initial frame. I proceed by defining a straight line which will help me control the shape. I now use the tool Fill Surface, which is a very powerful tool that fills any hole and gives enormous flexibility in order to provide me with the desired shape. All I have to do is select a closed loop, make sure every one of these curves are set to G0 as I don't want the fill surface to be curvature continuous to our frame. I then select the Fit to Curves option and select our straight line to make it follow the shape. To add additional detail to this lid, I need it to be a closed solid. Right now it's just faces, so I'll use offset surface with a value of 0 to extract the top surface of our subdivision model. When I now use SU to combine our three features, we have a solid to which we can add more blends. So now I can use some of the visualization possibilities to evaluate my design and potentially step back to the Realize Shape tool to do any changes if I want to.